1962, Tokyo, Japan. Sutomo Kato is a businessman with his fingers in several pies. One of these is a nightclub in Shinjuku, where he was exposed to a wide range of music. Among the artists who performed there was Tadashi Asanai, an accordionist who used an electromechanical accompanist, the Wurlitzer Sideman. Desiring something more from a rhythm machine in a fateful conversation, Asanai asked Kato if he would fund development of his own instrument. Kato agreed and they set up in a factory next to the Keio railway line, which they initially named themselves after, as coincidentally K and O were also their last initials. In 1963, Asanai's idea was realised and the DA20 Donkomatic auto rhythm machine was unveiled. Throughout the rest of the 60s, Keio would go on to produce several more rhythm machines, notably including the Mini Pop 7, which was used by Jean Michel Jarre. In 1967, another young engineer called Fumio Mieda approached Kato for financial backing to produce an instrument, but this time it wasn't a rhythm machine, it was a new type of organ. Mieda already had a track record having designed the Univibe effects pedal that was used by Jimi Hendrix, amongst others, so Kato agreed. The instrument he developed has since become known as Prototype 1, or First Prototype. This organ included technology for authoring timbre via electronic circuitry and had some unique features such as vowel selection, microtones and a high-pass, low-pass filter combination dubbed the Traveller. Although not released, this was arguably the first synthesizer to be made in Japan. After further development and changes, their first keyboard instrument saw the light of day as the Decacorg, or just Korg, the name being a portmanteau of KO and organ. This instrument also included the Traveller filter section. By 1972, around 50 of these organs were sold, and really, innovations aside, KO were unlikely to be able to compete with the established manufacturers of the day, and Carto was having to put in his own money to keep the business going. However, after becoming aware of the similarities between what Moog were doing in the West and the technology used in Mieda's Prototype 1, KO turned their attention to a standalone synthesizer. Mieda was also dispatched to Yamaha to work on what would become the GX1, the hertz per volt system it employed being a hallmark of Mieda who had developed the technology whilst designing Prototype 1. Meanwhile, in Osaka, a little upstart called the Roland Corporation were also working on something significant, and released in 1973, their SH-1000 was the first mass-produced synthesizer in Japan. But hot on its heels that same year was the Mini Korg 700. Whilst these instruments are from the same country and almost exactly the same time, they are very different, reflecting the fact that there weren't standards or precedents for synthesizer design at this point in history, especially in Japan where very few yet even knew what a synthesizer was. Mieda's Mini Korg was designed to sit on top of an organ with the controls below the keyboard in the player's line of sight. There was also a stand to hold the sheet music. On the left was the Traveller, with the high-pass and low-pass controls now occupying their own tracks. A little protrusion in each of the caps prevented the two filters from crossing, as this would result in silence. Resonance is boosted by switching the Bright tab. Next, denoted in orange, are the envelope settings. The first stage is from Attack to Slow, and the Decay stage is from Percussion to Singing. The Release stage is then activated by the Sustain tab, quite different from your usual ADSR. Contouring of the filter from the envelope is called Expand. As well as conventional waveforms, the oscillator includes two chorus settings which are created with square waves moving in and out of phase with each other. There's then some performance tabs and controls for bend, vibrato, portamento and repeat. And that's it. 
The following year, an updated version of the Mini Korg was introduced called the 700S. A second oscillator was added that was activated by an effect switch that could be used to beef up your sound or for three types of ring modulation. Tune noise and white noise were also added as well as switches to multiply the envelope time by 10 and modulate the filter from the LFO, which is called Travel Vibrato. The Mini Korg was relatively affordable at a time when synthesizers were high tech. Around a third of the price of the Mini Moog, it was one of the first synths that numerous young musicians were realistically able to save up for. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't used by some big names. Japanese composer and performer Kitaro developed an affinity for it, with the 700S becoming an integral part of his signature sound. It was one of Vangelis' early synthesizers, ditto the Human League. It was also used by The Cure, The Cars, Joe Jackson, Stevie Wonder, John Fox, Paul Hardcastle, and then much later artists like Adrian Utley, Darude, and Entrance, amongst others. You may find some examples of this instrument called the Univox MIDI Corp K1 or K2, and this is because the Unicord Corporation badged and distributed for the US. Around 10,000 Mini Korgs were sold and a steady flow of synthesizers followed as KO built a reputation. What happened over the coming decades is a whole other story we haven't time for now, but the company who would later rename themselves as Korg would go on to establish themselves amongst the greats. In 2021, nearly 50 years after the original release, Korg announced a limited edition reissue of the Mini Korg 700S under direction of its original designer. Adding a spring reverb, a signable aftertouch and joystick, mini USB sync memory and an arpeggiator, the Mini Korg 700 FS brings back the earliest Korg sounds to the latest musicians. And it all traces back to a conversation about a Wurlitzer sideman between an accordionist and a nightclub manager in the early 1960s. <laughs> 